Welcome back, Zero K fans, to Natalie's at Dawn. I remain your host, Shadow Fury 333, and this next match is going to be between Rar, North Chilean G, and 2 plus 2 is 5 against Anarchid, Mr. Casanova, and Catastrophe on Red Comet. So let's get started. Another 3v3. So, Western team starting out entirely on the southwest side of the map with. Rar going for the Shieldbot Factory, presumably for a couple thugs alongside their commander. North Chilean G going for the Cloakybot Factory, and 2 plus 2 is 5 going for light vehicles. While on the other side, Mr. Casanova going for shield bots, Anarchid going for light vehicles, and Hovercrafts are Catastrophe's factory of choice. Also, if you look, the eastern side is much more focused on maintaining all their territory in the corner, or in the side, the entire half of the map, while the western side is not taking the northwest. Leaving that is quite the opening as well. And I'm seeing already Catastrophe looks like they're taking advantage of that. Not sure if that's something they're aware of, but they will be very soon. So yeah, with that, it's going to be a lot easier for East to have footholds into the Western base. As, I mean, we see 2 plus 2 is 5 does have a couple Lotuses at the north side of their base to try to prevent anything from coming in trivially, but the problem is that that is still a problem. I mean, there is still a 3 metal extractor, there's still a 7.5 metal extractor value territory that's essentially out of their control. And as it is, Catastrophe has already set up some daggers there to make sure that they know anything that happens to it. So at this point, the western side is clearly playing a heavy offensive game in the south. I don't know how this is going to work. I don't expect it to work especially well, just because they don't have a great setup for their territory off the bat. Like, as it is... Right at the start, their territory is hyper-focused. The upside to that is it's going to be a bit easier to defend, and they clearly have some coordinated assaults over to the south that are being kind of countered already. I mean, as it is, the eastern team's kind of aware, oh yeah, they're going to hit our south. That's the only place they can hit. I mean, there are some slashes from 2 plus 2 is 5 coming over to the center, but not really much. So it's pretty clear that the Eastern team is just going to take the Northern side and be done with it. They're not even going to care. I'm a bit surprised 2 plus 2 is 5 isn't going to the North themselves and trying to take the North Western expansions. Possibly a bit of a mistake. Anarchist Commander, not really all that threatened. I mean, coming under fire, but that's not one warrior against a Strike Commander or Guardian Commander with a bunch of... Well, now a Riot Cannon on top of that, but a couple Scorches on top of that. Like, no, they're, they're fine. There are too many defenses to deal with that commander easily. But it looks like that is the plan from the Western team. Snipe commanders. Snipe commanders break the economy down that way, and then after that, come through. We've seen this work before, although that was a different team entirely, but I don't know if that's exactly what we're going to see. At this point, that seems to be the current strategy, but I kind of doubt it. At any rate... 2 plus 2 is 5, announcing they are planning to expand to the northwest side of the map, so the eastern team is aware of this happening. That is what that dart was basically for, after all. So at this point now, it's... What the... I... Oh. So at this point now, the western team... Kind of managing to get a nice foothold in the south. Anarchist commander actually going a bit far forward. Rather riskily forward as well, trying to set up some defenses to make it a bit easier to push forward, make a slow push, but it looks like they might just be putting themselves in an unnecessary risk. And the Rock was able to get a bunch of free pot shots, and not a whole lot of answers to that. The Bandits coming in here are just going to get wrecked. And at the same time, over to the north, Halberd's over here from, from Catastrophe, trying to do what they can, but not really much. Not against Scorchers. I mentioned before, last on Saturday, that Scorchers are basically the counter to Halberds, and that's why. Halberds have a hard time hitting Scorchers, and the Scorchers are constantly firing on the Halberds. And even if the Halberds are closed up, the Scorchers deal enough damage with the continuous fire at point-blank range that it's worth it. So there's not a whole lot to be said about that other than... Good choice there. Raw. Like, good choice there, 2 plus 2 is 5. That's, like, basically the way to go. That was a good call in unit composition. And as it is, 2 plus 2 is 5 is... To, they're taking the Northwest. They're taking a few expansions here and there or metal extractors here and there. They have the slashers in position. That'll help quite a bit when it comes to defenses. However, the halberds coming in here will be able to break the slasher line. So there should be some scorches around here to get rid of the halberds. I don't know if 2 plus 2 is 5 is going to do that. I hope they do, and it looks like they are indeed sending a couple up there. That's 
possibly not enough? It's a bit of a tactical question. Like, it's hard to call it now. We'll see what happens when the halberds actually attack, and it looks like... Ooh. And, well, Catastrophe playing it a bit more carefully there. Managing to take out a Scorcher for free. At the same time, though, Rar is starting to lose a few thugs to assaulting Mr. Casanova. And their commander as well, exactly as I expected. The commander is mo moving forward, but it's taking a fairly large amount of damage. Like, forced to move back. It's not doing bad for strength overall. Machine gun and as much range as possible. Which actually does lead me to wonder why they went as close as they did. Still, Rar's commander doesn't really have a whole lot of openings over to the south side. The northern side, they actually do. If they walked up north and took out, or at least attacked Catastrophe right away, they'd actually have a pretty good shot at this, especially with all the Howards now dead. And as it is, 2 plus 2 is 5, taking a strong push there. I'm starting to think that this is actually a bit of a gambit. The entire reason that they took the southwest, and the western team didn't take the northwest at all, was to make the eastern team feel a bit overconfident. Feel like, oh, well... This, the Western team is just going to attack to the South. Why bother defending the North? And it's like, well, this is why. Because the Southwestern team wanted you to defend the South so that you wouldn't defend against attacks from the North, which is probably also why we have 2 plus 2 is 5 going for the light vehicle factor, because they have an easier time going from the central position to the northern position given the speed of the units involved. Whereas over to the South, we have the Cloakybot and Shieldbot factories, and those are not as fast. And outside of Glaives, there isn't really much that those factories can do that will keep pace with the light vehicle. And as it is, the Southern Assault is also quite strong. But the Northern Assault was totally unexpected. There's nothing for defenses. Like, by 3v3 standards, this is nothing. These are not defenses. This this stuff here, that will be knocked down by basically any force that's pushed out. Any serious force is going to take out a couple Lotuses. And, of course, the Southern Side actually getting a lot of damage done to it as well. And as it is, North Chilean G doing some very conservative numbers. Like, they're taking almost no damage in the process. Getting rid of solar plants, getting rid of whatever economy they can over to the south side of the map, and setting up a nice, strong push. On top of that, they also have the Spectre here to help get rid of this Stinger. I mean, it'll take a couple shots to do so, but still. They can take care of the Stinger with little risk if the Spectre would stop being grouped up with everything else. I'd actually have a shot. Because, of course, the Spectre could get hit. I don't know why it's staying so close to its comrades there. Regardless, yet another assault attempt from Catastrophe not going super well. The Halberds look like they're trying to avoid conflict entirely. They're trying to get around the sides. Managing to actually put themselves in a rather smart position. Scorch is forced to come at them and basically bunching up the Scorches into a line. So this is Catastrophe's opening. They're going with the daggers over to the northwest. Looks like they're taking the center with the Halberds. And there's not much in the center, mostly just slashers. Very few Scorches have been built, so there's very little 2 plus 2 as 5 can do to effectively defend against half a dozen Halberds coming at them. Of course, their team is probably not going to be all that much help being caught up in the south as they are. And it looks like a counterattack is coming in from Anarchid as well. Oh, nice combo there. Oh, wait, that's Anarchid entirely. That's the team combo. But still, Anarchid, nicely done getting rid of North Chilean G's commander on top of getting rid of most of this force here. Well, they said in that up to B taken out. The Stinger probably won't die, but there's enough stunning it that it shouldn't be a threat for very long. That was... That was very effective. A simple strategy, fairly basic, but well executed and flawlessly effective. I mean, they lost a few Scorches in the process because, well, the Commander Death Explosion killed them. But still, the entire South Side Siege has been broken at the same time. Catastrophe is coming in with a strong counterattack over to the North with all these Halberds, or at least setting up for it and taking the North by force again. And that's kind of clever, because, like I said, it seemed like 2 plus 2 is 5 was essentially just tricking the team, or being part of the force in the north side, where they figured the north side would not be defended. It's just there wasn't enough of a strong push. There was a fairly strong push, but it didn't do enough. The Scorchers didn't manage to deal the damage they needed to deal when they came in. There wasn't all that much of an army coming into the north side anyway. And now the Scorchers are gone. The Slashers are now all dead. And... The northern side is defended. There are some more Lotuses. It's going to be harder to break that. Not to mention the Halberds. More importantly, the Halberds. Eight Halberds coming in here. That is not trivial to deal with. I'm curious to see what's going to be the development from here, though. The eastern side has a massive economic advantage as a result of taking the territory over to the north and the south. And, of course, breaking what territory was taken by the western side. So, with this, I don't know what 
the plan is. Rar hasn't really built anything. As usual, they're going primarily for a commander-heavy push. And I don't see their commander anywhere. Here it is. Rar's commander currently level 8. Well, a couple machine guns, a lot of speed, a lot of auto repair, a lot of extra firepower, or a lot of extra health as well. And what what's their range right now? 434 Elmo, wow. Like, almost rivaling Rocco's with a machine gun. Mind you, that's a huge metal investment. Like, 6,000 metal, that's a couple Dantes. Or almost a couple Dantes. Speaking of which, I'm curious, are there any Strider Hubs in the moment? This is about the time they'd be built, but it looks like no. There are no Strider Hubs. There are a few... No, no additional factors, really. Only the gun... Only the air plant. As it is, though, Catastrophe coming over to the northeast with the nine halberds, or eight halberds. That's probably gonna finish this. South side of the map, Mr. Casanova managing to also push back quite hard. And getting just line after line, just wall after wall, making it even harder to push back against this. Like, this... We saw a similar play last on Saturday, but that was much more concentrated over the center. Or much less concentrated, rather. This is much more focused. Just the south side, but it still works out. So overall, very strong play, and... Catastrophe playing a little safer than I would have expected, moving all those halberds back. But as it is, the eastern side, they just need one good push. And of course that- oh, Dominatrix is as well? Holy crap, yeah, that's gonna help a ton. Anarchid actually controlling quite a few of the defenses that were already set up. So, at this point, like, who owns these? Huh. Okay, well, I'm not sure who originally owned them. They're Anarchids now. But yeah, as it stands, this is... This is pretty much the last stand here, over to the north side of the map. 2 plus 2 is 5. Doing what they can to hold out against these halberds, but there's not much. Their forces are rather separated. And, of course, the halberds have the scalpel support on top. And all of these masons getting brutally killed. I mean, I like the fact that they're reclaiming and repairing. It's, it's what they do. But I don't think there's any more masons left. I think 2 plus 2 is 5 has just run out of them. Oh, they have a couple left. But that's about it. So, further pushing into the south side of the map, and Mr. Casanova's commander basically trying to rival Rars. Rars' commander is still ahead. Like, Rars' commander still wins. The commander... The commander size war. It's just that there's... There's a lot more that Mr. Casanova has behind that. I mean, there's an entire thug... Well, thug rogue ball coming behind it. Which is, of course, repairing the shields quite nicely that Mr. Casanova has, I believe, on their commander. Yep, area shield on their commander, as does Rar. But Rar has basically nothing on top of that area shield and is forced to retreat. Spectre's coming in to try to deal with the commander directly, but it's still going to take like three or four shots to deal with it. Actually, more than that. Wait. Player resigned? Oh, 2 plus 2 is 5 apparently resigned. I guess they figured that last stand did not work out and they had nothing left, and they might be right as Mr. Catastrophe is just... They are poised to break what 2 plus 2 is 5 had in their base. Possibly turn that into an entire loss, as Rar's commander also taking the damage into Rar's commander is the main defense over to the southern side of the map as well. Like, Mr. Casanova has solidly taken everything there. Anarchist not even pushing forward. Anarchist just seems to be hanging around in the back, quite content to just throw Wyvern bombs here and there. So, th this point, just waiting on the final push. It's really what it's coming down to. And Rar's commander, yeah, they will heal up, and they do heal up quite quickly. But even with that, it's not going to last that long. It looks like it's essentially just a question of when is the surrender poll going to be taken. Like, Rar is controlling all this right now. It's essentially Rar versus the world. My North Chilean G does have their factories, does have a few things to the south, but has very little to work with other than the Spectres. They're clearly doing what they can with the Spectres. It's just that it's not really enough. And with a three times economic difference, and Rar's commander potentially getting captured, not even going for the kills, just going for the captures. Didn't quite work out, but it's still pretty close. The Thunderbird mix was a smart idea. Unfortunately for Anarchy, that wasn't enough. Rar does maintain control of their commander, but that would have been hilarious if Rar had lost their commander to Dominatrices. Like, that might have actually spurred some serious discussion about the power of Dominatrix. <laughs> Whether it should be allowed to capture commanders in the first place. But 
that was a false alarm. Still kind of close, but at this point, Mr. Casanova's commander is moving forward. Like I said, they're basically rivaling Rar's commander, and there's not much that can be done between the commander and the rest of the army coming in, especially Catastrophe coming in with a second and probably final push over to the northern side of the map. The darts are a nice touch, but even that's not quite enough. Scalpels still have homing missiles. Like, Ravagers are really the way to go with Scalpels, but that is game. That is it. Nicely done to the Eastern team. Bit of a turnaround, too, because I wasn't sure how that was going to work. Like, if you look at the metal statistics, the Eastern team actually had the advantage the whole time. But, yeah, units killed starting to get a bit close at the beginning. Looked like they weren't managing to take so much territory. And the Western team did have the South quite strongly, but didn't have the North at all. And while they did, I really liked that it seemed like a clever ruse to make it seem like the North was not going to get attacked and the South was the main focus and that was it. Attacking the North like that was kind of clever. It's a shame it didn't manage to do more damage or didn't manage to get as coordinated as it needed to be to do the damage it needed to do to make it worthwhile. But it was still something. And also a bit of excess from the West as well, but really the Western metal income never went above 50. Or only slightly above 50, briefly. Whereas Eastern metal income... It, and it has dips and it rises because Reclaim does that. But actually, mostly it was Reclaim, come to think of it. But yeah, consistent increases over time. Like it consistently trended upwards. The Western income just plateaued around 50. And that was around the point where they started to get pushed back to the North. They never really took the North very strongly. They didn't have a position they set up for it. And then eventually all got broken. I was actually kind of impressed it lasted as long as it did, but, I mean, at the beginning of the game, I thought, oh, well, Catastrophe's going to take all this stuff. I expected this would happen, but I expected it would happen way earlier than it did. So, good job 2 plus 2 is 5 for defending the North as well as they did, given that they were not focused on the North. They were not the Northern player. They were the Central player. There was no North player. Still worked out, though. Anyway, that is going to be it for me tonight. Sorry, it's a bit of a shorter stream, but... Oh, well, that's... I will do... A couple others on Saturday along with other games. Like, Saturday's the main day. I just wanted to get through a couple of these that I figured they seemed interesting, but they seemed like more of the thing I'd like to do on Tuesday, especially the one I did last, because advice stuff I tend to prefer to, I preferred to do on Tuesday when I was still doing regular Tuesday streams. So, that's why I was there. And then this one, why not? Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. Thank you all for watching, and have a good night, everyone.